You are listening to Be Amplified, the podcast with Brie and Thais, episode 44. Hey, Amplifiers, welcome to Be Amplified, the podcast. My name is Thais. And I'm Bree Seely. We are the co-founders of the Amplified Collective, a movement aimed at radically disrupting how purpose-driven women connect and operate in the world. Because we believe it's not just what you do, but who you are that matters. Each week, join us for messages and interviews that will leave you feeling amplified and ready to change the world. Let's do this. Happy Monday! Oh, hey, Amplifiers. Thais uh, and Bree coming at you from our closets. It is it is Monday. And I think it's important that you know that it's going to be a fucking epic day. And to not let anyone beat you down. And to remember your fucking worth. And that you've got this. There is nothing that the world can throw at you that you can't handle, bitches. So let's take on the world. And then hold up a sec because you got to listen to our podcast first. So what happened to you having dipped energy? That didn't sound like dipped energy. I know. I was pumping myself up. So I was I was telling Brie before, <laughs> before going live that I was feeling we've been recording a lot today and like I'm feeling heavy. But then I was like, you know what I'll do? I'll just motivate the listeners and that will motivate me oh good it kind of worked oh good so maybe i just need to go on that pedestal every once in a while what is it it's not pedestal it's pedestal like how am i saying it wrong wait what is it it's not it's not a stool pedestal it's not a pedestal. pedestal there you go okay i still there like my stool because then i imagine a stool that i stand on and that just makes more sense than whatever a pedestal <laughs> is <laughs> Oh, man. Well, Amplifiers, as usual, uh, we are on fire and excited to chat with you. We're doing a little bit of a different episode today. Um, but Wait, before... Brie, wait, Brie, wait, wait, wait. What? What's our new byline that we just created? Real oh. women, real conversations, real shit. Yep. I felt like I had to say that again so that we remembered it. Yeah, Thais just said that in a different interview that we did, and uh, I was like, ooh, that's good. That was like the time I stood up on the bike at the Soul Cycle place and was like, uh, we get women together to connect in ways that don't fucking suck. And so, that became an unofficial byline. Yep, now we have another unofficial byline. For our podcast. Okay, okay, what were you going to... by Thais. What were you going to say? I was going to say, we, uh, Thais and I decided to do this podcast episode a little differently. We did. Um, but before we get there, we want to let you know to mark your calendars. Um, as you know, we do dinner parties every month, and Thais and I have felt called to change them and haven't known how to change them for the last few months. But we figured out something that may work. So we are doing a dinner party June 6, 2017 in Los Angeles at the Mar Vista Art Department. Um, tickets are not yet on sale, but will be soon. So for now, just save it in your calendar, 6.30 to 9 in Mar Vista. Tickets will be going up soon. It is going to be a great, beautiful, intimate, curated, just magical dinner party. And we would love if you would join us. Done. There's that. There's that. Put it in your calendar. I'm excited about it. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be good. I'm, I'm yeah. excited to not be in restaurants anymore. So... Ditto. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, all right, you want to reveal the big reveal of like what this episode's about? Yeah. So we're gonna be answering your questions. We Ooh. asked. <laughs> That's my caveman noise. If you guys listen to season one at all. <laughs> Wait. Can you do it again? Can you do it again? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, so we uh, asked our Facebook community, which you can join at beamplify.com community, beamplify.com community, not beamplify.com. Do not listen to my. To not listen to me. Listen to the other me. It's beamplified.community. We have a Facebook group. We love you all. And uh, we asked them, what do you want us to talk about? So we're going to do a whole Q&A uh, session today, answering your cues with our A's. And we'll see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have the questions. So I'll be asking the questions. And Okay. Okay. Question number one. What do you do when you feel like an imposter? Um, that is a great question. What do I do when I feel like an imposter? Well, one, for me, imposter syndrome is always a sign that what I'm doing is right. 
So a lot of times when, when the imposter syndrome comes up, people are like, oh God, I have to be doing the wrong thing because clearly I'm not qualified to do this thing. For me, it's a sign that I'm on the right track because if it wasn't important enough, that imposter syndrome wouldn't be coming up in the first place. So the first thing that I've done is I've like purposefully curated this belief that imposter syndrome is not a bad thing. And it doesn't mean that I'm doing something wrong. It actually means I'm doing something right. So when it comes up, I'm now trained to be like, oh my God, I'm on the right path. Right? That was, that was beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? That, that's it? That's... I mean, maybe I might bounce after <laughs> you do, but like, you go. Uh, okay. Um, so, okay. I have a huge answer for this and I'm going to try to keep it short because, you know, this isn't the Thais show here. Uh, <laughs> wait, what did you say? I said, what? <laughs> uh, so imposter directly stems from, or feeling like an imposter, feeling like a fraud, feeling like you're going to be called out, um, is directly connected to your worth. And, uh, in order for you to, uh, mitigate feeling like an imposter, you first have to do the work of really looking at your sense of unworthiness. Um, I definitely feel that they are connected and there's a lot of inner work that you could do to really set yourself up for success to help you feel um not as much as of an imposter I definitely don't feel like we always for the rest of our lives have to feel like an imposter um if you do breeze mindset and then you do the inner work like if you couple both of our uh, uh approaches what I know you'll find is that you actually won't feel like an imposter. So, so I feel like it's important that I say, and that you understand that feeling like an imposter is something that can be addressed and it is not something that you just have to deal with for the rest of your life. Um, and so what happens is when you take what Bree said and you do the inner work around your worth, what you'll find is that you won't feel like an imposter. Instead, you'll just feel a sense of, um, uh, excitement and exhilaration and fear of what you're doing because you're doing something big, but it doesn't come from a place of brokenness. I don't belong. No one loves me. I'm unsafe. It comes from a place of, holy shit, I'm about to jump off a plane. I'm doing something really big. And of course, fear is always going to come up. Fear is absolutely inevitable. But you know what I'm saying, Brie? Like it just doesn't come from a that deep wounding. It comes from just your biology and your mind reminding you that you're human and that fear is inevitable. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. So for me, you can't, you can't just do one thing. And then you'll never feel like an imposter again. You have to do yeah. that mindset thing, but you also have to do the internal stuff. Um, because yeah. that's a sign that you don't feel like you belong here. That's a sign that you feel like, you know, there's something deeply wrong with you. And this feeling is completely perpetuated by our society and uh, are the people in our lives. And then it's it perpetuates and it, it augments our uh, wounding and the fears that we have from childhood, all the things. So we have to look at that. And once um, you look at that, once you do that um, shift that Brie suggested, I deeply believe I have a dream where women will no longer feel like imposters. So I, um, I just heard, I'm in a training program right now. And he, uh, in his most recent video said that all situations are neutral. Like every experience and situation and circumstance is neutral. What colors it is the stories and the expectations and the ideas that we place upon it. So that situation, whatever it is, prior to you arriving to that situation, it's just a, a neutral situation. So it is the stories that you're telling about that situation that are then causing that imposter syndrome. So like Thais said, you know, doing the internal work to heal that stuff, those stories, um, and then also shifting the idea of, you know, what imposter syndrome means mm, that's um, can be really helpful to just neutralize the situation again, because it's not the situation or circumstance. It never is. You know, Thais is brilliant standing on stage and I get a little bit of stage fright. So, you know, it's not the stage that's the, the thing. It's the stories that she's telling about the stage versus the stories I'm telling about the stage that cause the feelings that each of us experience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So start looking at what the stories are that you're telling about whatever the situation is. Heal them, like Thais mentioned, 
Um, and then you should be able to shift out of that experience or that yeah. symptom. Yeah, these, it's amazing. I've found in my life that when we feel broken, when we feel triggered, when we feel um, insufficient, when we feel uh, that not enough, you know, all of these uh, experiences as it's bringing up, uh, coming up within us from circumstance, it's actually a signpost. It's an invitation to go deeper. It is not, when we take it as just one level, like, oh, I feel like an imposter. I have to address that. And only that you miss out on the breadth of, uh, ex um, knowledge and wisdom that you can derive from what's coming up. And so whenever I feel, you know, for example, when I was healing my binge eating, if I only took it as to be about food, then I would still be consumed in thinking and obsessing over food. But I realized very quickly that it had nothing to do with the food. And my binge eating and emotional eating challenges actually had to do with an anxiety that was deeply stemming within me. And the more that I addressed that, a, a result of that work was that I just wasn't interested in food in that way anymore. And so the, a result, the a confidence results in you getting extremely familiar and clear with these uncomfortable feelings and you're asking yourself, what's here? What's coming up within me? Why am I feeling uncomfortable? Why am I feeling like an imposter? What does this feel like in my body? What is, what is here? Where did the story begin? What was I taught? How can I separate myself from that story? How can I shift? How can I recalibrate? How can I forgive? How can I love? All of the ways in which that we can start to heal this so that we can step into the confident woman. The amplified woman. The amplified woman. Ooh. Da, da, da. Okay, do we feel complete with that question? Sure do. Okay. So next question is, how do you take bold actions? I need support well, on taking bold actions. Like, how can I take more bold actions? I usually think of what action I need to take, and then I do it. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I mean, that's part of it. But, um, I mean, you know, a little bit of what I just said is that like, you know, an action's just an action's just an action. So I think the thing that distinguishes a bold action from a normal action is that a normal action isn't necessarily going to get you to the goal that you've set or get you where you want to be. Bold actions, however, are the ones that are going to take you like 50 steps closer than a normal action would. So like a bold action, I feel like is just the energy of 50 50 normal actions rolled into one because the impact of a bold action is much bigger than you just like sending a tweet. Right. Yeah. So again, it's, it's a little bit of the story that you tell about it. So like, what is it about this, this bold action or taking you 50 steps closer to your dream that you're scared of, or that you're, you're failing to do, you know, do you have a fear of success? Are you, hindered by being seen in the world? Like, like, what are all those things kind of underlying it, the stories that you're telling about that are like keeping you from taking this bold action in the world? Yeah. And, um, you know, that pause was a divine download. I've never, ever said those words or had that perspective ever before now. So whoever asked that question, thank you. Brilliant. Uh, you should go back and listen to it and take notes. I know, and... right? Start using it more often. <laughs> Yeah, I found that the best way to be supported in taking bold actions is to have accountability. And usually that comes in the form of paying someone to hold me accountable. Or um, getting a friend like Bree to just kick you in the ass all the yeah, time. Yeah, but friends friends are great. Uh, but what I like about the money exchange is that I feel like I have a skin in the game. Yep. And I'm giving that person permission. Whereas, like, for example, my partner, I don't want him to hold me accountable. I want him to just love up on me. You know what I mean? But, like, if I were to hire a coach and their role is to support me and hold me accountable, then I'm much more likely to listen and to do it. Anyway, so that's one way that I've been supported in taking bold actions is to get accountability. And for me, the best accountability that I found was through a coach, but you can also do it through a mastermind. Um, you can do it through, uh, uh, specific relationships that you set up to, for it to be accountability. Um, and be careful about who you decide that person is because it is a special role. They have to be able to kick your butt a little bit, right? Cause some, bold actions are uncomfortable inherently. 
Um, and then also just know that like you're not gonna die from taking a bold action. I promise you're not gonna die from taking bold action. It and feels like it. It does feel like it, but every time you take one, it gets a little easier. And um, it gets a little less intimidating and you realize that you didn't die. And then you, what starts happening is you start getting what you want. You know, the bold action starts taking your business or your life in a new direction, in a bigger direction. And it's so exciting to see, wow, I'm actually, I'm making impact right now. I'm actually doing it. And um, I feel like that's really, that's everything. And then that fuels you into taking more bold actions and, you know, it's a spiral. Yeah. And one other thing to note uh, in terms of bold action is that the way, the way, the part of the reason it's so scary is because our brain categorizes it the same way as it does if we were dying. Like, and I know that sounds really drastic, but um, so much of our brain is so primitive and like literally hasn't had any upgrades since the human race was, came into existence. And so our brain identifies like a caveman in that us taking bold action is akin to us like being chased by a saber toothed tiger. Like our, our brain categorizes those two things as the same. And so knowing that this physiology is happening as you're taking bold action can sometimes also help soften the resistance that you have to it being like, oh, right, my brain just is in shutting down because it thinks that I'm in danger, but I'm not actually in danger. So, you know, I'm going to love on myself a little bit and take this action anyways. Yes. Beautiful. Well said. Oh, thanks. <laughs> These are good questions. Um, and actually, we have a whole podcast on taking bold actions. What did we call it? It was from season one. I think we had a whole well, podcast on taking action. So I'm just saying. I mean, everyone should just go back and listen to all of season that's one. That's what I'm anyway. saying. So, uh, that's what I'm saying. That is what guys. I'm saying, Bray. That's what I'm saying. Actually, we're not going to call it homework. Here on Be Amplified, we call it soul work. So, uh, so your soul work for the next week is to catch up on all what 50 episodes. <laughs> Just kidding. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> uh, okay. Next question. Next question. Uh, how do you deal with resistance? Good, good question. So resistance for me, I always step back from it for a minute and I'm like, okay, why am I resisting this? am I resisting this because it's not aligned and it's like literally not what I should be putting my time towards. It's going to be a waste of time and energy because it's not going to result in anything. Or am I resisting this because it is that big, bold action and my brain is telling me that I'm being chased by a saber toothed tiger and going to die because it's exactly the action I'm supposed to be taking right now. That's going to move me those 50 steps ahead. So I always like to distinguish the two first, because if it is that it's not aligned, then great, you're off the hook. Don't fucking do it. But if it is that you're resisting it because it's exactly what you're supposed to be doing, then, you know, going back to my previous answer of, you know, what's, what is it that you're resisting? What are you afraid of? Um, and, but you Bray, know, what if you don't that, know, what if you don't know which one it is? Do the work to figure it out. Like, so the only thing that will ever lead you in the right direction is your intuition. You already have all of the answers you will ever need inside of you. They're all there. One, you need to ask. And two, you need to listen. And if you, know, you need to know more about listening, we have a podcast about that too. <laughs> Luna Love, just a few weeks ago. Go listen. I mean, okay. I will say this. Resistance in, of, in and of itself is not bad. Um, fear is not bad. I mean, I know that we have this thing like love and fear are opposites and we always want to be in a place of love, but fuck that shit. Like we're humans. We have both. We have all the things. Resistance will inevitably come up. Fear comes mm -hmm. up and you know, it's like, so let's remove the stigma. There, it, there's nothing wrong or bad with resistance. Just and, like I said a minute ago, resistance and fear are neutral, pretty much. Wow. Like, it's the stories that we then place upon them about, like, oh, well, I'm in resistance, which means it bad, it's bad, which means... And then, and then we go into the stories of all the right. things about why resistance is bad when you, you could just look me, at Bruce it. Okay. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. I try not to. Yeah, okay. But okay. you paused, so... Uh, I, was, I, was, I was bringing myself together for my big point here. Okay, make it. Well, now I lost it, so... 
a bowl. Really? <laughs> I oh, actually, you didn't. I was just, I was kidding. I didn't have some bold thing. But anyway, <laughs> um, the the thing to also really acknowledge about resistance is just because you have resistance doesn't mean you're supposed to push through it. You know, a lot of times, and a lot of coaches say, "If oh, resistance is good. It means that you're on the edge. You just have to push through it. You just have to keep going." And to some extent, that could be true. And to some extent, it could not be true. And it's exactly what Bree said. You have to figure out the difference. And while you don't know the difference, while you are still in limbo and you don't know if this resistance is a sign that you're not supposed to do it or whether it's just fear and it's something that you should do, you know, just be really gentle with yourself. You know, we don't know what the fuck we're doing. Like no one has the answers. No one has the answers. All we know is what's in the moment. And so just come back to what is here. Can I be tender with this? Can I love up on the fear? You know, in my work with my with my clients, we talk a lot about honoring our limitations and how okay it is to honor the fact that there's fear and that maybe we're not ready to take that big, bold action yet. Or maybe we are, I don't know. But it's just when we can come at it from a space of tenderness and a space of nourishment and a space of listening and a space of gentleness, then the bold action will arise from us and intimacy with ourselves, our sense self will also arise from us. And I that's just, the whole point, right, Brie? Like, isn't the whole point yeah. of taking bold action to not just be masculine and go woohoo and like push through, but also to be divinely in the feminine and in that centering and in that groundedness. Like there's, why take some big, bold, scary, like me calling the president would be a big, bold, scary action, right? Like, I don't know why the fuck I'd want to do that shit, but <laughs> it would be, it would be a big, bold action. But like, is that? Is that really the aligned in the the space of who I am and what I want to be? And so we have to equal, we have to look at that. And so if I'm feeling resistance from calling Trump, even though that's a big, bold action, it doesn't mean, oh my God, he's going to kill me, isn't he? I don't know. I'm scared of Trump. Um, <laughs> it doesn't mean that like I'm wrong where I have to just push that resistance. It just means that my value system is off. So it's just get aligned with your values, get aligned with what you want, really, really sit with your visions, your desire. And we'll talk about visions in a second, because that's the next question. And then, you know, get some hand holding if you need, and then do the, do the right, do the thing that's going to feel good. You know, I just made a Facebook post about this actually recently. Um, And I feel like, you know, we, again, we label resistance as like bad, And so for me this year, since January, every single time I go to book a trip out of LA, so I'm having this one confliction in general, part of me is like really itching to get out of LA. Like I need to get the fuck out of the city. And then the other part of me is like, every time I try and go to book a trip somewhere, I have this like fear and resistance and hesitation happening. And so has that stopped me from traveling this year? Absolutely not. I've already taken three trips and just booked two more. But like, I don't need to know. Like the resistance that I'm having isn't bad. And I don't necessarily need an answer right now. And so this idea of just kind of sitting in this, like, I kind of don't know why I'm having anxiety about traveling. The second I booked a flight home to Minnesota, I went into a full-blown panic attack and was like on my floor crying. And I have no idea why. No idea why. The trip was beautiful and perfect and amazing. And I loved being home. I don't know why I'm having this resistance right now to traveling, but it's happening. And so instead of pushing it or forcing it, like Thais is saying, I'm giving it space to exist and honoring it and still saying like, yeah, I still have to live my life. Like, you know, I still have to go see a client in New York City. So I, I'm booking my flight, but not labeling that as bad and not trying to push it or change it or fix it and just kind of letting it be. And if I'm supposed to know why, the answer will come to me and just Done. being there. with it. That's it. It's just this is life and you get a chance to decide how you're going to handle it and what you're going to do with what's here. It doesn't matter the why. At the end of the day, you know, it gives us some answers sometimes to figure it out and have our intuition tell us. And then many times we don't know why. We don't know why. And we just have to trust and just do it. And then just know that whatever you decide is going to be the right thing and move on. You know, overthinking is just such a thing. Like decide, move on gentle move on be like a river you know flow move do 
you'll figure it out. Answers will come. It always does. And, um, you know, sometimes bold actions are overrated too. So <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. Lately, I've been all about unbolding my actions. That's funny. Been, I've been like, you know what? I don't want to take bold actions today. I want to be in my in my softness, and I want to be in my in my flowness, and I just want to do little things today, you know. And that's well. And and this reminds me of something too that we have to remember that we are human beings are very seasonal, and not to say like fall, winter, spring, you know, whatever. Those things do help, and they do impact us, of course. But like right now, I'm in a season of deep deep introspection and hibernation i'm in my fucking saturn return okay dealing with all the shit oh my god so like you have to remember too that like yeah thais is not in a place to take bold action right now and that's okay and i'm in this deeply introspective like birthing process of some big things that are coming out for me this year and that's okay like when you're in those those phases honor them like know yourself well enough to know if you shouldn't be taking bold action right now and that's okay yes so yeah. basically we just unanswered all of the questions we just answered with well, some some more some more depth some more I, layers i feel like so many like so many questions that we have and, and i'm super guilty of this as well is a lot of times when we ask someone something We're literally just looking for permission. So like we're giving you permission to like not take bold action if it's in alignment. Now, if you are not taking bold action because of fear and trying to hold yourself back, whole different conversation. Mm -hmm. But like give yourself permission to know yourself well enough to understand what's going on within you. Mm -hmm. And the the kind of causes, like Ty said, you don't need to know the why, but the causes behind the resistance. Yeah. Is what's more important than the resistance in and of itself. Yes. Okay. Let's move on to the okay. next two questions because they kind of go together and um, they're uh, they're really good. And before I do that, Chewy, what, what are you trying to do here? What are you? Where are you trying to go? He's like. He's like um, deciding that now's the time to get up and to lick my face and to shake himself off. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere, dude. Yeah. Okay, now he's coming up. Now he's so. Licking Thais my face. has this thing with Chewy now that every time she says goodbye to someone, he like gets all excited and hops up in her lap and like licks her and gets all like you know like. He's when used he gets to my Skype water. schedule. He's like yeah. he knows when. So I'm apparently, saying... it's time for us to say goodbye. Like a ha- we've reached a half an hour. Chewy's like, "It's mom, just say goodbye, just say goodbye, <laughs> so that I can do my thing." <laughs> this dog is fucking ridiculous. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So the next two questions are kind of similar. So I'm going to read them both out and then we, we get to like decide how we're going to answer it. So the first question is, how do you find your vision? How do you find your vision? And once you know it, not let anyone or anything get in your way. And then the second question is, how do you be clear, specific about your vision, but also stay flexible? Mm. These are, I guess, three um, kind of similar questions. Do you want to start? Yeah. I guess I should probably, since I'm like the vision. Well, so it's funny, Thais and I have both been talking a lot lately about our strengths finder. Uh, If you haven't taken it, you could or you couldn't. It doesn't really matter. But um, (laughs) my worst, no, we're the worst. Like you could do, you could take bold action or you could just not. Like you could take this or you could just not. Like the poor people, like no one can get any flat forward advice from us. It's fine. But it's true. I mean, each of us have our own journey. Anyways, so uh, my top strength is futuristic. So that's like where I spend so much of my time is in my vision and, you know, figuring out and all the things. And then okay. before you anyways. go into your vision, though, um, let me bring in my little expertise for a hot minute. So <clears throat> if you don't have a clear vision of your life, if you don't know what's next, if you don't, you know, know what um, to do next, there's nothing wrong with being in that place. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes it's an invitation for you to slow down, to get present and to do some healing work, because this is a natural way that your body, that your mind is telling you, you've got to focus on healing first before you get 
to step into some larger version of yourself, right? We first have to become ourselves before we can step into like a larger version of ourselves or whatever that looks like. Um, and so I, we're finding this in our um, group program right now that we're leading, the Amplified Woman, is that some women have very clear visions and they're very big and audacious. And some of them are having a harder time finding their vision or having a harder time understanding what their vision is. And then they look at the person who has the clear vision and they get like, Oh, well then I'm not like what, there's something wrong with me because they have a clear vision and I don't. And then when we dig a little deeper, what we realize is that they're not ready yet to have a vision because they just have to get grounded in the present first. And not saying that once you have a vision, you can't be grounded in the present, but like, what if we were to believe that everything was happening for a reason and like, everything within us was happening for a reason. What is the reason behind not having a clear vision? If not that right now you're meant to clear up the past a little bit first, you're meant to nurture yourself a little bit first. You're meant to, you know, remove the judgment and expectation of what your life should look like first. Yeah, I totally agree with all of this stuff. I mean, like it's okay to not have a vision. Like again, giving you all permission, like it's okay to not know. Yeah. You know what I just did um, yesterday, Brie? What? I had a big epiphany last night. Ooh, do yeah. tell. Yeah, it's part of my sound in return. <laughs> I hate vision boards. I hate vision boards. Why am I going to be staring at a board filled with things that I don't have to be reminded of what I don't have? Like, I don't. I got, I bought into the whole vision boarding experience because of all the things, you know, the vibration, the vortex, the things, the wants, the desires. But what I realized is that staring at a vision board for me specifically only elicits feelings of lack, which we know if we talk about manifestation is the exact opposite of what you're supposed to have, mm -hmm. right? Just like when we talked about how I want to buy my Porsche Macan and you're like, why don't you go test drive it? And I'm like, cause I know that if I go test drive it, I'm going to feel inadequate and lack because I can't have this in my life right now. Some people love window shopping. They love test driving Corvettes and fancy cars and feeling into that thing. It, it fills them up with vision and possibility. For me personally, it makes just me feel crap to go into a mall and look at all the pretty things and not be able to buy any of it, right? So when I had this epiphany last night and I ripped my vision board that I had and I changed the background of my computer into a picture of Chewy instead of this vision, what I realized is that everybody's vision and path looks different. And more than anything, if you can get anything out of listening to me and Brie, it's that Brie has a completely different experience of life than I do. And neither one of us is less than or greater than. And this is something I'm stepping into is that just because someone has a vision board and they get fulfilled by it and they manifested their fucking mansion out of their vision board and blah, 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 doesn't necessarily mean that a vision board is right for you. So yeah. The, and oh, oh, go ahead. I mean, this is just a brilliant example of like, it's, you know, everyone's out there talking about their big visions and da, 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 da. Like, it's okay for you to not have one right now. So Thais and I both got gifted um, pre-order copies of Danielle Laporte's new book. And I love her whole first chapter. You know, she talks about like, can you imagine not craving to be any different than you are right now? Mm-hmm. And she talks about how transformation begins with the radical acceptance of what is. Exactly. So, so instead of pushing yes. to change something yes. or make force something to be the way that it is, just because someone else is doing that doesn't mean that like you don't have to do that. That's not your path. So the difference between Thais and I is that she's not guided by a vision. We all have different internal factors that kind of motivate us, right? I am deeply guided by my vision. Like waking up and listening to my vision every single day is what gets me out of bed in the morning. Like Pause. that is what I do. Pause. This is really, really good. And you may note that Bree's vision may be a 10 year plan where she's dominating the world. Okay. Probably knowing Bree, that's exactly what her fucking audio has. I am dominating the world in 10 years. Actually, You're it sounds a little more like brain. What are we doing today? <laughs> Well, Pinky, we're taking over the world. Oh but so, so, okay. So adding just a little bit of depth here before you keep going, Brie, is that you can have not be inspired at all by a vision that just doesn't inspire you or whatever, or you may have a vision that's just very intimate and cozy. It could be a vision of 10 years where 
you have very simplistic experiences and desires and you're very much fulfilled by those things. Like you live in a little one bedroom off the beach instead of world domination, right? So you can have any level of vision and it is valid. Or you could just not even focus on having a vision at all because that doesn't inspire you or because right now you need to be doing a little bit more healing and more grounded work. So there's all the spectrum when it comes to the conversation of vision. And so Bree is yeah. going to share her input from one end of the spectrum of having big visions and, and her answers are going to be geared by that because that's what inspires her. That's one of her strengths. She loves that. And then my position is going to be from a place of no vision at all where I actually am really okay with not only not knowing or having a vision of my 10 year life or goal, but actually feeling very fulfilled by not having it. So we're going to be exploring these next questions from these two perspectives and we'll see where we go. Yeah. So the one thing, like I've, I've studied a lot about manifestation and all these things. And so many people think of manifestation as like, well, I want a red car, so I'm going to get a red car. Right. And their vision boards are filled with Porsche Macans and you know, all the things, right. Uh, do not tell, do not say I can't have a Porsche Macan. I'm not saying you can't have one. <laughs> what I've learned is instead of attaching yourself to the physicality of your vision, it is infinitely more powerful to create and manifest from a level of feeling. So instead of Thais, say, putting the Porsche Macan on her vision board, she may instead feel motivated by this idea of, you know, the feelings that she's feeling in her life. And then if the Porsche Macan is aligned with that, then of course it will be manifested into her life. But instead of focusing on the vision of I'm going to have X amount of clients and live in X house in X location and da, 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 focus instead on like, how do you want to feel? Because yeah. it's never about the house. It's never about the clients. It's never about the car. It's about the feelings that el- you're, that are elicited within you in having those things. So for me, like I upgraded from a car to an SUV and it's not about having an SUV. For me, it's the sense of safety that I feel and the, the huggingness and the comfort and the security that I have while driving that car. So that is the stuff that I use to manifest. So my vision doesn't look like, you know, having a husband and, and this and that, and, and having, you know, this clients and this business and all these things, my vision is really shaped by like, when I wake up in the morning next to, you know, my husband, what am I feeling? What, you know, senses am I experiencing? Like, those are the kinds of things that shape my vision. And that will help you create an infinitely more powerful vision than if you were to, you know, have all these check marks down a list of all the things that you've quote unquote accomplished in your life. Mm, I love that. And so for me, I changed the background of my computer to be a photo of Chewy and my dog. Uh, he's 11 pounds. He's 11 pounds now, Brie. He has gained two pounds since uh, in the past three months. He's become a fatty. Oh, thank God. Oh, I know. Uh, but when I see him, a photo of him, or I look down on him, I immediately feel grounded and fulfilled and I close my eyes and I just feel how perfect my life is and how amazing and incredible and supported I am and how divine my challenges are and how amazing my unfolding is. And that is the same thing. You see that? It's the same thing that Bri is saying, but from a completely different perspective. And so take somewhere that feels good for you. We're giving you that permission, again, to find what feels really good for you. And then fuck what anyone else has to fucking say about their experience, okay? Just because it's working for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And so that yeah. is how you not, how you not let anyone or anything get in your way. You get so clear on what works for you and what feels good for you that you literally it doesn't matter what anyone else says because you can feel it in your body Mm -hmm. and when you have that body knowing that feels good like when you have an orgasm and it's just like a whole body like no one can say that wasn't an orgasm or that didn't count or that those wasn't good enough right because you felt it it was a body sensation and so just like what Bree said about you know feeling good in that experience the same thing when you feel good in your heart in your soul and you're just breathing in this soul energy here literally it doesn't matter what anyone else's vision is what anyone else has to say about your vision because it's yours. Oh, and on that, 
topic, don't tell people your vision if they can't support you. For the love of God, like do not tell people what you want if you know that they're going to judge you or doubt you or whatever you. Treat your desires like a, like a sacred pact between you and the universe. Mm -hmm. And only share it with those very special people that you know are going to be like, fuck yes, this is possible for you. Yeah. Um, there was one thing that I was going to touch on just now and I totally spaced. Damn dun, it. I dun, hate when this happens. such an old lady. I think you distracted me by the orgasm talk. I'm sitting here being like, oh God, Mama Seely, we're talking about sex again. Oh Shit. my gosh, you're so Oh funny. no. Um it. how to find your vision when, how to not let anyone get in your way of your vision sharing uh, your vision it's meant to come back to me it'll come back to me that's uh, what you always say uh, nah, whatever let's keep talking if it, if it comes back it'll come back in a flash so when we talk about that that naturally answers that kind of third question is how to be clear specific about your vision but also stay flexible right you like, oh, 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 oh I told oh. you it would come back it's so good too are you ready for it okay yeah Start asking yourself, what do I want? And what do I give, need? Yeah, give yourself permission to, like, look at what you want. Stop letting other people tell you what you want. Like, as women, I've been talking about this a lot lately, as women, the second we're born into this world, all of these expectations are put on us. Oh, cute, she's going to make such a great mom. Like, they get the Fisher-Price uh you know, kitchen set for little girls. Like, oh, she's going to be so good in the kitchen. Like, she's going to be a wife someday that'll feed her husband and she's going to have babies. And like, we have all these expectations placed on us literally the second we are born just by the sole fact that we are born a girl. Yeah. So stop letting other people tell you what you want or what you need and start asking yourself, what do you want and what do you need? And then give yourself permission to honor that. Like, it can start slow and small. You know, this yeah. is how we start. We start with, what do I want right now? Like one of the best, biggest ways when I first started the spiritual path um, on, on figuring this out is, what do I want to eat right now? Well, I should eat leftovers. Well, first off, Brie, I don't know if you know this, but I never eat you leftovers. Hate leftovers. Fucking leftovers, okay? It was ingrained <laughs> in me to fucking eat leftovers. And you would have never survived in the Sealy household, man. I mean, oh, man. okay, so chicken fried rye is a really good uh, leftover food. Pizza is another really good leftover food. Uh, quinoa, spinach shit, probably not. Like, probably not leftover food. Anyway. You know that's my life, right? I know, I know. So anyway, so Mark eats leftovers, <laughs> which is great. It works out great in our relationship. But when I, you know, when I first started my spiritual path, it was really like, what do I want to eat? Maybe I want ice cream for lunch. Maybe I want to go completely out of my way and get a salad that I know is really delicious that I love. Maybe, Maybe I want to go to creation and get an acai bowl and then rub it in Bree's face that I'm here eating this amazing thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, also, I I literally spend like hundreds of dollars at creation a week. Like <laughs> they, they, they need to know that I fucking love their Amazon bowl with goji <laughs> berries on top. Um, oh my gosh, I have a really funny story to share. Anyway, okay. So really ask yourself, like, what do I want to eat? What feels good right now? What do I need right now? What what can I do to support myself right in this moment? And then just do that and start honoring that. And you take it small. And as you do that, as you slowly start to listen to what you want and take you know take action on it, then you're slowly going to be able to do it in bigger ways with your vision and with your desires and with your goals and really feel into that, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah, why you another... say, oh, 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 Jesus, I keep wanting to address this last question, but no, please keep oh, going. And I mean, another thing to look at with this too, is like when you're starting to, to dive into your vision, like if that's something you get to a point where you start diving into your vision, really asking like, is this what, is this mine? Is this what I want? Or is this something that someone else has given me? Like, I just look at if I hadn't gotten clear on not wanting kids, and I had ended up marrying, you know, my college boyfriend who everyone told me I was ridiculous to break up with him because he was like the perfect, he was going to be an engineer and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And like, I look at if I hadn't known myself well enough to break up with him and really stand in my truth of not wanting to have kids and holding that as my vision, I would be the most fucking miserable human being on the planet right now. Yeah. So give yourself permission to want what you want 
to be clear on what you want and to create that for yourself. Because one, no one is going to create anything for you. And two, like, why would you live someone else's life? Well, because we're taught that that's the way that we're supposed to live our lives. But anyway. I'm officially unteaching you. <laughs> Fuck that. Give yourself permission. Oh, my God. If you say the word life. permission one more time, I'm taking a shot. But that's. Shot, I'm, shot, 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 maybe shot, we shot, shot, amplify, shot, 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 amplify shot, drinking shot, game. Shot, 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 um, shot. Ba, 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 ba. Mm, oh, my mm, gosh. Mm, 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 so. Mm, mm. But it is like a lot of this conversation is about that. It's about us saying, you know, I'm going to stop listening to what other people say and like really give myself the P word to, uh, (laughs) you know, do what I want to do. Do you. Just fuck other people. Well, and you know, I'm going through my Saturn return. I feel like it's important that I announce this. Three times. So everyone take a shot. Saturn Return has been said three times this episode. I'm really claiming this, okay? This is like my first time really saying it out loud, and I'm really claiming it You're right third. now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what's happening is I'm realizing that things that I wanted before, I don't, I no longer want, and things that I'm, uh, that I valued before, I'm not necessarily valuing now. But what's cool is the more. I'm doing this work and I've, you know, been doing this spiritual work for 10 years now and I'm starting to actually see the fruition and I'm starting to see myself get really grounded in who I am. And the more I get grounded in who I am, the more I just naturally become more unapologetic and become more this sense of unfuckwithable and not really um, living my life based on other people's expectations. And it's really, it's been a really cool experience. And so, you know, if you are finding yourself attaching yourself to other people's desires and not sure what your values are and not sure what you want and not, you know, kind of falling into the spiral of other people's expectations, again, this is your invitation to slow down, to, you know, get support and to start doing the internal stuff. Because until we find an integration with ourselves, we're never going to be really living an authentic life. And you can have the vision with all the macans. Trust me, my macan is my vision, right? <laughs> you can have all the visions that you want and it's not going to satisfy you. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what Brie and I keep talking about. You know, money is great. I love money. I love my macans. I love it. It's the most expensive luxury SUV and I fucking love that car. And it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything about my worth. It doesn't mean anything about my my um, my level of contribution to the world. It's a car that many people can't afford. And if I can afford it, then holy shit, wow, I've worked really hard for it. That's all it means, you know? And it's um, it's a luxury. It's, it's exactly that. It's a luxury, but it doesn't define you and it's certainly not going to make you happy. So get really, you know, clear on what's, what needs a little bit more attention within that you can kind of come back to yourself because when you can come back to yourself, all of the answers will be naturally, uh, answered. (laughs) Yeah. And then just to wrap up quick, a mantra that Thais and I, uh, gifted to one of our amplified women is just this idea of being open. Mm -hmm. Like so often, you know, we close this energy by being like, I don't have a vision. And by you constantly reaffirming that you don't have a vision, the universe is going to be like, oh, right, you don't have a vision. I I get, I see that. Yeah, you don't have a vision. So instead of constantly saying like, I don't have a vision and when's my vision coming and that's like really closed energy. What would it look like for you to be open to seeing your vision? And like really just energetically like feeling that expansiveness of like, I am open to receiving my vision. And just continue reaffirming that. The more open you can be to receiving it, the more likely it is that you're going to receive it versus saying that you don't have it and you'll continue to not have it. Boom. Boom. Done. We're at time. Yeah, wow. I I thought we were just going to talk for like 20 minutes about this stuff. I know. I was like, oh, God, only four questions? Yeah. We're not going to make it. Well, Those are good it. questions. Those are good. Yeah, we, we talked a lot. Of, okay, good. So we're done. Um, again, we got a dinner party coming up in June. Uh, and you can also learn more about our Coterie, which is our membership group. We uh, have a book club. We have all we're sorts of things. We're going to a Dodgers game. We're going to an outdoor movie. Like, oh, we have so many good things planned for this summer. Yeah, so we have a membership for women in L.A. You can check us out on our website as well. And you can find us on all the socials. And we got a really, really amazing podcast interview next week. And then an oh, so even good. an even greater one the week after that. The, the next like few guests that we have on. Oh my like, god. The next ten guests that we have on are just so good. So good. Uh 
we had we just finished a podcast interview and like I was like oogling over this woman okay like like <laughs> salivating over how amazing of a goddess she is so we just were continuously bringing on really juicy guests that go much deeper than the typical podcast conversations and, and that's kind of our goal you know um we actually had one of the interviews we did their press people uh, got in touch with me and said that it was the most humanistic press that they had received for that client oh my and God. so yeah yeah, so you as you guys know, we do shit differently, and uh, we have great conversations. And it, so, if you like the podcast, we would love for you to share a review uh, with us on iTunes, and uh, you know, feel free to share it with some friends too. <laughs> Sharing is caring, my my loves. Sharing is caring. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that was amazing. Do you like that? No, that was good. <laughs> I'm so glad that you said that. That was that was just great. All right, I'm done. All I'm right. done with you, Brie. I'm done. We're out. I'm done. Tyson Go. needs a nap. I need a nap. We all need the naps. Yeah. Go be amplified. Happy Monday, and we'll talk to you next week. Mwah.